Good morning, South. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance with the school nurse, Ida Puccini. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll hear more from her later on in the show. Good morning once again and welcome to the Falcon Report for this Friday, the 16th of September, 2022. At day one, I'm Ekaterina Alvardova. And I'm Isabella Dombrowski. Students interested in a role for the upcoming musical Hairspray secured their roles last week through a competitive audition process. To give us all the details, we bring in the Falcon Report's Niali Gerardo. South's theatrical troupe is back in action for this year's production of Hairspray. Last week, Thursday, anybody passing by the music office would see students hard at work memorizing monologues and practicing songs. Ranging from Good Morning Baltimore to It Takes Two, students had to present their talents to Mrs. Rudin, Mrs. Graves, Ms. Picorni, and Mr. Giordano. A competitive experience for all. For the Falcon Report, I'm Nayeli Gerardo. And on the note of music, students in Mrs. Shannon Trujillo's Spanish 4 class put together musical and literature pieces. Using 10 recently learned Spanish verbs as the backbone of their creations, students were hard at work this week. The task was clear, make a rap, poem, or song that could have a mixture of Spanish and English. Working from Tuesday up until yesterday, the class members trunked together Spanish words and phrases, injecting creative rhythm and musical stylings to enhance the remembering of the new terms. <laughs> the culmination of these efforts was showcased yesterday with poems, raps, and songs galore. AP classes have had multiple opportunities to explore and share their summer work. Students in AP language classes were responsible for presenting a chapter of their choice from John Green's The Anthropocene Reviewed. From presenting teddy bears to the QWERTY keyboard, each student had to convey the chapter's significant central idea and information about the author, as well as their thoughts on the chapter. Meanwhile, sophomores taking AP seminar launched right into their course's major focus on presentation skills, explaining core issues of the world today. Starting with the general issue and then transforming into potential solutions and limitations of that solution, the summer presentations gave AP seminar students a small taste of what's to come in the rigorous AP seminar course. AP physics students have recently begun one of many labs to come in their school year. Alexi Peets has the story. That's right. The world of kinematics was explored by the students of Mr. Jeffrey C's AP physics class in their lab. The goal was to learn about the relationship between position and velocity in relation to a car's motion. To achieve this, students analyzed different position and velocity graphs and tried to match the motion of their car to each respective graph. Whether the graph showed movement forward or backward, or a complete stop, students moved their cars to match what they saw. To confirm whether they were accurate, lab peers used a graphical analysis software to show both the position and velocity of their cars over time. With these graphs, students then had to match these with the original provided graphs, requiring them to use critical thinking skills in what the data in a position and velocity graph actually means. An amiable introduction to AP Physics. For the Falcon Report, I'm Alexi Peets. When the Falcon Report returns, we'll talk much more about physics labs, but first, a bird's eye view of the main office hard at work. The Falcon Report will be right back. Dash! Don't. Who's there? Show yourself! Get away from me! Leave me alone! Get me out of no, here! No, no! I'm here to help you! Wait! Really? Here is freedom! A world of clubs, sports, and activities! More importantly, you can browse them all here at the club fair. Join clubs of all kinds, the Literary Art Magazine, Falcon Report, Cultural Society, and more! 
Wow, I think clubs are a great way to get involved. Je ne sais pas parler français. La vive la France! Thank you, Mr. Bonaparte. Okay, Mr. Lincoln, we're ready for you. Four school and seven years ago, all problems. Hold on, hold on. That's great, no, Mr. Lincoln. But what exactly are you going to do for our school? Um, I was the 16th president of the United States. Student government is in need of student leadership. Come to the meeting next Thursday after extra help. Aren't you just tired of instruments? Uh, Aren't you just tired of this company that is the marching band? The orchestra acts so professional, but aren't they just as bad as the rest of us? And aren't you just tired of your chorus teacher always messing up in the middle of class? The Jedwoods will be holding auditions for new members next Wednesday, September 21st, and Thursday, September 22nd at 7.05 a.m. Any students in grades 9th through 12th are eligible to audition. Please see Ms. Stefano and Mr. Hayden in the music department for more information. Among the new staff this year, Ms. Ida Puccini joins the South community. She will work alongside Ms. Melissa Gallo in a team of two nurses serving the South community. Emily Nothert had the chance to speak with her about her new role. Emily? I'm joined here now with one of South's newest school nurses, Ida Puccini. So, how has your experience been at South so far? It's a good experience. We're very busy, but I'm very fortunate. I have a great teacher, Melissa. And what did you do before you started working here at South? Well, my last job was at a BOCE special ed school in Suffolk County, and it, I liked it there also. I liked the students like I do here. And what are you looking forward to here in the South community? Well, I look forward to having a career here. It's a great school. Everybody's been very good to me here. I enjoy coming here. And everyone keeps me busy. And what led you into this career? Well, I enjoy taking care of people and helping people. And I enjoy being around people. And any quick health messages for the South community? Um, only that I would like to say to everyone to try to stay healthy and remember that we are still in a pandemic. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having ba me. Back to you in the studio. The humidity of Monday and Tuesday has given away to nothing short of glorious weather today. But will that glory return? Hamza Kiani fills us in from the Weather Center. Hamza? Apart from some partly cloudy skies, I'd say the glorious weather is here, and it's the last weekend of the summer season. Today, we'll host some beautiful sunshine and, com and comfortable temperatures in the high 70s. Transitioning to Saturday, temperatures will stay consistent in the se greater 70 degree range with light cloud cover. Quite a pleasant kickoff to our first home varsity football game. On Sunday, we'll see mostly cloudy skies with temperatures in the mid 80s and moderate humidity. An enjoyable couple of days ahead. Back to you. There was some excitement on the soccer field this Tuesday. With more on this and other South sports, here's Alina Trzinski. Alina? That's right, the girls' soccer team sure had a thrilling finish. The Falcons did not let Mineola's 2-0 lead get them down, and the team kept up the intensity throughout the first half. Then, halfway through the second, a Mineola foul in the box led to a penalty kick opportunity for Mia Maurice. She capitalized, and the Falcons were on the board. Still, the clock was ticking down, and the one goal deficit persisted. This all changed with only 12 seconds left when eighth grader Chanello Obitri's pass off the corner kick went straight to sophomore Kelly Garay. Just like that, the game was tied and the Falcons earned their first point of the season with a 2-2 two two finish. Meanwhile, the boys volleyball team continued their conference domination with a strong showing against the Sailors of Oceanside this Monday. They too had a slow start, dropping the first set 17-25. The second set saw the Falcons begin to fly. Excellent defense from junior Luke Lopez earned him 10 digs and every one of them was critical in a 26-24 set to win. The second set saw the Falcons begin to fly. Excellent defense from junior Luke Lopez earned him 10 digs and every one of them was critical in a 26-24 set to win. As the third set went on, kills were racking up for captain Jonathan Matthews, who got 31 of them. 
Matthews is not only leading Nassau County in kills, but in all of Long Island. Each kill led to even louder cheers from the crowd, as did the excellent play by setter and captain Brandon Ye, who got 38 setter assists, also adding to his county lead. The Falcons won 3-1. And that's sports. That's all for this edition of the Falcon Report. For Isabella Nebrowski, I'm Ekaterina Alvardova. Have a great weekend, South. Isn't it great that they let the ninth graders host the Falcon Report? For real, it only took us five hours. <laughs> <laughs>